Hi. Um, we ended with our discussion about the covalent compounds by drawing the Lewis electron dot structure. And then right after that, we were able to um, determine the molecular geometry of these compounds by looking into its, its central atom as to how many surrounding atoms it has and also how many lone pairs because these two will influence the kind of shape our molecule will have. Now this time in continuation to this, the shape of the molecule has, a, has an influence also to what we call the molecule polarity. When we talk about polarity, we talk about a dipole. A dipole means two poles of a molecule that arise when there is an unequal distribution of the electrons. Now, when does it happen that there will be an unequal distribution of these electrons? It happens when there is a difference in the electronegativity of these molecules. So when we talk about electronegativity, we talk about we talk about the measure of the attraction of the atom to an electron. The more electronegative an atom is, so the more it attracts an electron, when it is least electronegative, it has least electronegativity, then the more it shares its electron to another more electronegative atom. So when we talk about polarity, when we talk about a dipole, one side is partially positive, then the other side is partially negative. So when we say partially negative, that's where the electrons are usually staying. And when we talk about partially positive, that's a deficient um, area of the atom, deficient of the electrons. So we will still be using FET today to be able to represent, to, um, to show how polarity works. So let's start with two atoms. So in this particular um, simulation, we check on electrostatic potential and electron density and at the same time we turn on electric field and then partial charges and band characters so we would be guided where is the direction of the movement of the electrons when they're being shared in a molecule. So right below you'll see the electronegativity of your atom A and electronegativity of atom B where you can already um, manipulate the measurement of its um, attractiveness to an electron. So if we start with having more or less the same electronegativity for both atoms A and B, so same scale right down below, you'll see that there is no polarity, there's no dipole that's seen on the screen. A and B have equal distribution of the electrons because their electronegativity is the same. Usually this happens if you have a two-atom molecule, these usually are your diatomic molecules, so the same element. So when we say equal distribution, so we get a nonpolar um, polarity. So this molecule is nonpolar. However, when we vary our electronegativity, say for example, I make atom A very less electronegative, you would see that atom A becomes partially positive. By the way, this symbol is a delta, Greek symbol delta that will show us the partiality of the charges of your atom of the side of the molecule. So you see here, this is partially positive. And on the other side, because B is more electronegative, that's where the electrons stay most of the time. And so you get a partially negative side. So this molecule is a complete representation of a very simple polar molecule. And you would see that your electric field the partially negative atom B side will attract to the positive electric field. And on the other hand, atom A, because it's partially positive, it's going to attract to the negative electric field. If we try to increase further atom B's electronegativity so that they will have a bigger difference in electronegativity, you would see that the more the electrons go towards B and the more that the partially negative will become bigger. And if you look at bond character, as we maximize electronegativity of B, the bond character becomes more of ionic rather than covalent. So what does this mean? It means that you're already dealing with a non-metal and a non and a metal. So there's already complete transfer of your electrons. So what does this mean then? It means that if the electronegativity difference of the two elements are really, really big, 
usually if the difference is around 2.5 and up, if you look at electronegativity values, then you get an ionic compound. That means you're not dealing anymore with molecules, but rather you're dealing with metals really losing electrons while the non-metals gain the electrons. So if we reverse this, if we make atom B very less electronegative and atom A become more electronegative than B, then you'll see that the molecule switch places because it's A now that's partially negative and it's B that's partially positive. So that's the same idea if we further increase atom A's electronegativity. So you see that the that the net ionic charge becomes really distinct when we have very big difference in the electronegativity. Now let's go to three atoms. If we have three atoms, the same thing. Let's check on bond dipoles and partial charges, and we turn on electric field. If we start with the same electronegativity for all three atoms, you won't see any, any, any uneven distribution of your electrons. However, if we change like atom A's electronegativity and we increase it, you would see that atom A goes to the positive electric field because atom A is the one that's more electronegative compared to atoms B and C. So atom A is the partially negative side of the molecule, while in this side, you'll have your partially positive side. If we increase atom, B, atom B's electronegativity and make it the same with atom A, you would expect that A and B will all be facing towards the right, towards the positive electric field, while atom C will be facing the negative electric field, which is partially positive. If we again make it the same, then there will be, there will be no changes. If we make atom C very electronegative, compared to atoms B and A, then you would see the turnaround of atom C facing the positive electric field. And the others will have the partially positive end. So this is actually how a polar molecule looks like and its difference with a non-polar molecule. So when we talk about shapes, just remember that when you have when you look at your central atom, when you see that there is a lone pair in the central atom, usually that makes that constitute, that's one of the criteria that will make your molecule polar. And if you see that your surrounding atoms, the one that surrounds your central atom, your terminal atoms are different elements. Different elements mean different electronegativity. So that means you'll also get a polar molecule. Other than those two, generally, you will get a non-polar molecule. So the ultimate consequence or the ultimate um, application of this is when you combine substances, you know the principle like dissolves like. So if you have same polarities or if it involves substances with charges such as ionic compounds and you pair it up with polar molecules with charges as well, then they are compatible. So when you mix them, they completely dissolve into one another. If they don't, if they have this, if they have unlike properties like a polar and a nonpolar or a nonpolar to an ionic, you won't expect them to to dissolve into one another because they have different properties. So that's actually one of the applications of polarity. So I hope by now it's clear to you what molecular polarity is. So bye for now. Watch out for my next video.